a second review of the Grand Army by Bret Hart, Francis, I read last night of the Grand Review in Washingtonell's Chiefest Avenue, 200,000 men in blue, I think they said was the number, till I seemed to hear their trampling feet, the bugle blast and the drummel's quick beat, the clatter of hoofs in the stony street, the cheers of people who came to greet, and the thousand details that to repeat would only my verse encumber, till I fell in a reverie, sad and sweet, and then to a fitful slumber. When, lo, in a vision I seemed to stand in the lonely capital, on each hand far stretched the portico, dim and grand its columns ranged like a martial band of sheeted spectres, whom some command had called to a last reviewing, and the streets of the city were white and bare, no footfall echoed across the square but out of the misty midnight air I heard in the distance a trumpet blare, and the wandering night winds seemed to bear the sound of a far tattooing. Then I held my breath with fear and dread for into the square, with a brazen tread, there rode a figure whose stately head Oler looked the review that morning, that never bowed from its firm set seat when the living column passed its feet, yet now rode steadily up the street to the phantom buglel's warning till it reached the capitol square, and wheeled, and there in the moonlight stood. Revealed a well-known form that in state and field had led our patriot sires, whose face was turned to the sleeping camp, afar through the river's fog and damp, that showed no flicker, nor waning lamp, nor wasted bivouac fires. And I saw a phantom army come, with never a sound of fife or drum, but keeping time to a throbbing hum of wailing and lamentation the martyred heroes of Malvern Hill, of Gettysburg and Chancellorsville, the men whose wasted figures fill the patriot graves of the nation. And there came the nameless dead, the men who perished in fever swamp and fen, the slowly starved of the prison pen, and, marching beside the others, came the dusky martyrs of Pillow's fight, with limbs enfranchised and bearing bright. I thought perhaps Eltwas the pale moonlight they looked as white as their brothers. And so all night marched the Nationals dead, with never a banner above them spread, nor a badge, nor a motto brandished, no mark save the bare uncovered head of the silent bronze reviewer, with never an arch save the vaulted sky, with never a flower save those that lie on the distant graves for love could buy no gift that was purer or truer. So all night long swept the strange array, so all night long till the morning gray I watched for one who had passed away with a reverent awe and wonder, till a blue cap waved in the lengthling line, and I knew that one who was kin of mine had come, and I spake and lo, that sign awakened me from my slumber.